Isn't this a very pretty chart? This is the HORT token and it's a token that's packed to a certain trading range. You can see the price doesn't fall below a certain range. And why is that token packed to this range? It's because it serves as utility for the HORT DeFi project. The way this works is you buy 10 HORT tokens. So that's for the standard plot. When you click here, create a plot. The standard plot has 10 HORT tokens. One of those tokens costs roughly $100. So you buy in with $1,000 and then you get back as a reward for holding that plot 0.1 tokens each single day. So after 100 days, you would have your money back. Now there are some complications around this. First of all, the tokens or the plot rather stops rewarding you after a while. So they have a lifetime. You can maximum out a plot for 300 days, then you have to buy a new one. Another nuance here is that you've got a sales tax depending on the price of the token. You've got up to 20% sales tax. This is pretty much applying to everybody right now because the price rarely goes above say $104 where you would have a lower sales tax. So there are some caveats to this, but all of this wouldn't be that problematic if we can ensure that over the lifetime of your plot holdings, the token actually will stay within the range, right? So even if you only get 300 days, even if you have to pay 20% tax, still you would be making money given that the token trades within the range. And when we look at this, further out in the future. So we look now at the daily chart and actually see that the price really historically doesn't fall below a certain level. It used to trade higher somewhat. Now it tends to trade here at this lower bound, but it still doesn't fall below. So this all looks green, right? But how is this magic actually being achieved? How is it possible that the price doesn't fall lower here? It's because of an algorithm that buys up the token once it's too low. So there is another wallet somewhere out there that simply just buys whenever we are low enough. Now that other wallet needs money in order to buy the token, right? This is a trading pair of Ford to BUSD. So this other wallet needs to hold BUSD to buy up the token. Now what's that other wallet? That wallet is called the liquidity manager. And over here, you have to dig a little bit into this, right? But over here with a bit of magic, with Dune analytics, we can find out what's the balance of that liquidity manager wallet over time. You can see at the beginning, this was rising relatively nicely. Then we had a peak in October of this year. Since then we are rather falling. Sometimes we get liquidity pool injections. So or liquidity manager injections rather. This comes from all kinds of other sources. So the project also has a treasury. The sales tax also goes into this pool. There's also a trading bot somewhere that generates some revenue. There's also revenue coming from other projects that basically license this algorithm here. So there are different ways how this is filled up. But what's important here is that this liquidity manager can never fall below zero. Let me actually change this a little bit. I think the banner here for the premium membership was covering this. So we can see since March of this year, the project was in existence and now we are rather falling. Now, why is this falling? It's because there's more sales of the token than buys, right? And the sales come from all the holders of that project. If you hold a plot, you get these claimable rewards all the time. And by the way, if you claim once, so after your very first claim, you don't get 0.1 token per day, but only 0.05. So it basically it's cut in half. So this is what they mean here by mutation is active. So that means your plot is not alive for 300 days, but for 600 days in case you decide to claim already on the very first day. So a lot of complicated tokenomics around this, but all of this was implemented basically to avoid this liquidity manager balance to further fall, which unfortunately so far didn't really help much, right? There's still more people exiting the system apparently right now than entering. Now, why is this all happening? There are different charts that I've made here. Feel free to check them out, right? Here is the link, tune.com slash my handle over here slash hoard by Bitcoin strategy. And uh, I've written those queries myself. So if there are any bugs in it, feel free to point them out in the comments. What I find most important here is this breakpoint over here. This is when the mutation started to get implemented. Or in other words, when claiming got disincentivized. When taking money out of the system got disincentivized and people are rather waiting for the claim 
until the very last second when they think things might not be as stable. So we see here that with that mutation implementation, less inflow was generated. In other words, there are less people that now create plots. This number of total plots is rising slower post mutation activation than before. So the whole system slowed down somewhat, but we can still see that the tokens that are promised to the existing holders isn't slowing down that much, right? Because people simply continue to get their 0.1 or 0.05 tokens per day. And so the delta between what's flowing in and what could flow out, given people would actually claim, the delta is growing over time, putting potentially more and more pressure on this liquidity manager. So we need accelerated growth in order for this balance to go back rising. I personally am invested in the project, as you might have already noticed. So my plots will decay relatively soon at the beginning of January of next year. Let's see if the project survives until then. I've also already mutated. So I have claimed my rewards. I get paid out my rewards now with only half the pace simply because I didn't really like the development over here, right? But I simply just present the data. What you are doing with the data is of course completely up to you. I simply wanted to show here what's actually underlining this mechanism because that's in the end really what you want to dive deeper into. If you get into this project, you want to know, can this price pack stay for long enough? And what's long enough depends on when you first claim, but the very minimum is around 120 days, right? 100 days to get your first 10 tokens back, then another 20 days to pay for the tax, 100 days, 120 days roughly, and you can do all kinds of modifications to make this break even point even further out in the future, right? Claiming early or buying an additional NFT, right? The NFT boosts your reward, but you also have to pay for the NFT. So the NFT breaks even actually later than the traditional plot. There are complications in here. Feel free to learn all of them. But the minimum that you are betting on is that there's enough continued money flowing into that this liquidity manager here will stay alive for another four months roughly. Okay. And we can see here how long on this chart one month roughly is. So probably this here is roughly the duration of one month. So if you think that the liquidity manager can stay above zero for an additional four months, then you should go in. Otherwise you should stay away. At least that's personally my opinion, right? No financial advice, but just sharing the data that I aggregated here. Looking forward also to discuss this with you in the Telegram channel. So here at the bottom left, you see the Telegram channel, simply search for Bitcoin strategy channel within the Telegram app. And if you're looking for the trades that I currently do, you can also check out the premium membership that's here at the bottom. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.